welcome you all uh, for this uh, second virtual annual international conference on naturopathy nanotechnology nutraceuticals and immunotherapy in cancer research 2021 organized by school of life sciences in association with uh, purdue university usa and tamil nadu state council for science and technology uh, myself uh, dr suresh kumar a senior scientist working in the biochemistry department in clra chennai before i am going to this uh, my area of research and what we are going to discuss today i would like to express my thanks to the organizing secretary and organizing committee members and especially the coordinator dr p ashok kumar associate professor in crescent and also that organizing secretary professor dr s m lata professor and dean for the giving me the opportunity to share the research ideas in this virtual meet Actually, what we are going to discuss today is the therapeutic aspects of FOXO signaling in breast cancer cells using the natural products. What we are going to discuss is what they have already done on this FOXO signaling with the different natural compounds, and what we have actually carried out or any activities in our lab in the context of FOXO signaling along with the natural product in detail. We will see in these upcoming slides. so let us begin with this detail so that uh, the graduate level students also can able to understand what is the meaning of the breast cancer here now coming to the breast cancer if you take cancer what it is defined is the disease in normal cells in the breast begin to change grow without control and no longer die that is the picture will depict the cancer cell process how it occurs between the normal cells once get cell mutate and cell cannot repair itself and once it cannot repair itself it goes damaged and cells multiply itself now coming to the specific of a breast cancer like all forms of cancer breast cancer is made up of unusual cells that grow out of their control those the cells may also travel to places in your body where they are not usually found so this is happens when the breast cancer condition is called as the metastatic condition so breast cancer usually begins uh, either in your gland uh, that uh, produces milk called lobular carcinoma or duct that carry into the nipple called as a ductal carcinoma it can grow larger in your breast and spread to nearby lymph nodes through your blood stream and uh, to the other organs to the circulations the cancer may grow and invade a tissue around your breast such as your skin or chest wall different type of uh, breast cancer grow and spread at a different rates some take years to spread beyond your breast while others grow and spread quickly if you take the conditions of breast cancer it is the most prevalent disease and holds the second rank in the mortality rate of women after the lung cancer all over the world wide if you take the recent uh, data in 2020 approximately 2.3 million new breast cancer cases and representing the 1.7 of all cancer cases and it is the fifth leading cause of cancer mortality worldwide with 685000 deaths in specially in the breast cancer uh, some of the breast cancer types which i have been mentioned in this picture it is called as in situ meaning in place and invasive called as infiltrating what is mean by in situ cancer this type of cancer have not spread past the duct or lobule where they have started example is dcis that is called ductal carcinoma in situ and lobular carcinoma in situ this ductal carcinoma in situ is a early stage we can call it as a stage 0 in this case the disease still in the milk duct but if you don't treat this type it can become invasive and it is often curable when there's in the case of lobular carcinoma in situ found only in the lobule region which produces the breast milk and it is not true cancer but it means you are uh, more likely pronounced to get the breast cancer later stage of your life so if you have have this type of uh, lcis you have to get regular breast exam and the mammogram these are the some of the diagnostic aspects for the future diagnostics for breast cancers next type of cancer here the picture is called as invasive we can able we clearly see it has been leaked out of the particular region that has been spread or invaded surrounding the breast tissue the invasive or infiltrative ductal carcinoma scans its starts at the milk ducts it breaks through the wall of the duct and invades the fatty tissue of the breast it is a most common form accounting for 80% of the invasive cases of the all over the breast cancer patients 
whereas in other cases said to be the 10% very less cases cause invasive lobular carcinoma ELC where the cancer starts in the lobules but spread to the surrounding tissues or other body parts it accounts for 10% of invasive breast cancers so these are the types of uh, common type of breast cancer which has been predominantly existing in women now we will move to the next slide this slide will show the all over the races that means all over the uh, world the different asian american white and black people races we have shown this female breast cancer how much the age group people are affected if you see from the red pink blue and uh, major region that's been starting from the age group of 45 it has been notified at the age of 45 to 54 nearly 20 percent women has been reported with the new cases whereas the age of 55 to 64 they report 25 percent whereas 65 to 74 age group represent 24 these are the breast cancer statistics that has been conducted in the 2019 and all over the worldwide now if you take especially in the breast cancer cases in india if you take india if you take according to the icmr report it has been matching with all over the worldwide because presently the two graphs has been shown presently is the red one and the blue one is the 25 years back if you see the age group of uh, 30 to 40 and 40 to 50 and 50 to 60 the present scenario the percentage of uh, new cases has been increased whereas the age group 30 to 40 showing 16 percent whereas the 40 to 50 years showing the 28 percent and 50 to 60 showing the 30 percent so it was matching with the all over the worldwide status of the breast cancer with the age wise population in india also now we will see the what are the risk factors that has been associated with the breast cancer generally we know the gender female is the most uh, pronounced for the breast cancer and a very very rare 1% males have been affected. If you take race, race means the form of color more common in the whites that has been happening all over the world and age wise it is increases as women gets older and also we can see some of the relatives, some of their uh, um, relative friends or the mother or sisters, some of the inheritor genes also may be the reason for this breast cancer they are reporting for the risk factors of caught from that the major cause if you say is the menstrual history that is the early onset of their late menopause is the condition for the breast cancer and childbirth first child after the age of 30 or having no children at all also be the reason for the risk factor that has been associated with the breast cancer and pregnancy and breastfeeding are the protective against the breast cancer Apart from this, what are the physical conditions that has been associated with the breast cancer is the obesity and the diet which you are going to take the daily life for the healthy and nutrition, nutrition food that has been important to prevent from the breast cancer and uh, fat and uh, fatty food and alcohol consumption will lead to the more risk factors for the breast cancer and lack of physical activity and stress, radiation exposure with your frequent exposure with the CT or M. XRA or a computer tomography analysis and history of cancer of the some other conditions of breast, uterus, cervix, ovary also relate with the breast cancer and especially with the hormone therapy such as estrogen in hormone replacement therapy or birth control pills. These are the frequent intake of these medicines also leads to the risk factors for the breast cancer and as I told genetics certain conditions that are inherited that has been coming from the family for several years that is also be the reason. So now we are seeing what are the risk factors now we will come to the diagnosis when we go to the physician how they will diagnose the breast cancer from the different stages. If you stay start from the class doctors initially classify the breast cancer according to the stages that has been classified 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. 0 we can see the name itself as showing the least advanced stage where cancer cells are within the duct and have not invaded into the surrounding fatty breast tissue whereas 1, 2 and 3 distinguished by the size of the tumor and where it has spread to the chest wall or skin or lymph node near the breast this type of uh, localization can be diagnosed between the stage 1 2 and 3 whereas the stage 4 is set to be in a most advanced stage the cancer has spread almost the uh, all over the body that is called a metastasis condition to the other organs or lymph nodes far from the breast okay once the physician has diagnosed how they are going to treat or how they are going to diagnose based on the 
hormones that has been present on the especially on the breast cancer first is hr positive that is called hormone receptor positive how they are described this is described as high proportion of estrogen or progesterone hormone receptors that has been present the hormone signals the cells to increase the cell growth this is how the breast cancer cells has been multiplied whereas hormone receptor negative cases the people which is a negative hormone receptor have lower number of estrogen or progesterone or receptors where the breast cancer that test positive for a protein called human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 er2 which promotes the growth of cancer cells and it tends to be more aggressive than the other type of breast cancer this is a coming under the group of er2 positive breast cancer whereas the final diagnosis said to be a triple negative breast cancer here the breast cancer cells that test negative for estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor and human growth epidermal growth factor receptor 2 it is characterized as a more aggressive and less responsive to standard treatment because these hormones are negative in their uh, cancer condition so that their or uh, the tablets or whatever the medicines we are giving is not going to respond now coming to the treatment of the breast cancer first one is the local therapy it is called the lumpectomy along with radiation has been given which we can see in from the region where the mastectomy whether the radiation is present or absent the complete uh, it is a more advanced disease cases where we can completely able to remove this or so the ultimate aim for this local therapy is to treat the primary site of disease because it is not spread all over the body or some other organs or some other tissues where if, if you take the systemic therapy this is a systemic therapy where we can use three type of approaches which include chemotherapy whether which i said here along with hormonal therapy with several uh, drugs and targeted therapy so if you classified all these one here we have showed surgery which include lumpectomy and mastectomy and radiation therapy whether plus or minus and chemotherapy it has been used as a systemic therapy for all the breast cancer patients along with the by targeting the specific drugs in the blood circulation to the particular area of the body and hormone therapy by using drugs such as tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitor and biological therapy which use escitin it is a monoclonal antibody specific therapy that has been er2 positive cells it particularly target this er2 positive cells with this antibody mediated therapy and lapatinib pentastatic er2 avastatin and low dose aspirin these are the some of the prescribed medicines that has been used for the breast cancer patients depending upon the stages they will do this uh, treatment according to the condition so far we have seen what are the general strategy that has been used for the breast cancer treatment which have been used in various condition now we can see this plant based naturally occurring plant based anti cancer compounds that has been taken from the target database from 2018 npct we can see the nearly 573 compounds that has been natural compound that has been shown anti cancer activity that means it can be having the property to prevent the chemo prevention that is why it is mentioned the anti cancer activity not only from the breast you can see the lung colon or lymphoid and nasopharyngeal skin prostate liver so several plant or uh, any sources from anything from the natural compounds that has been derived from the plants having the wide variety of the anti cancer activity these are the overall picture i want to show you now we will take what are the common the foods that we have taken in our daily routine life some food plants having the anti cancer properties such as vegetables and fruits if you take the carrot it has been carotenoid the functional group if you take grapes it has been resveratrol if you take tomato it has been present lycopene if you take the green spinach it has been natural anti oxidant mixture if you take garlic the actual compound is allicin If you take ginger, it is called gingerol or shogol. It has the active compound. If you take cabbage, it has been indole three carbonyl. If you take all the citrus fruits all together, it has been rich in vitamin C. If you take aloe vera gel, it has been emodine. If you take cranberry fruit, it has been mirtin. If you take pomegranate fruits, if you see the ellagic acid is the active component and cloves, the eugenol and vanilla, vanillin and rosemary, carnosal and mustard is the sulfur friend. so these are the anti cancer properties which has been shown the different uh, in vitro and in vivo uh, or and the activities which has been shown that these plants having the anti cancer activities 
now coming to the commercially available drugs which i want to show some of them fda approved drug that has been commercially available in the market it is called as the vinca alkaloids it is a plant or herbal based product the active component the vinca alkaloids the name itself showing the alkaloid is the active component that has been present from vinblastine vincristine vindesin and uh, these are the several plant species how it uh, target the cancer cells means it is uh, going to target the microtubule it is going to damage the microtubule damaging agents the vincla alkaloid especially vincristine and vinblastine it is acting through the monoamine oxidase that is called the moa where the picture a and b showing the normal mitosis and b is the mitosis blocked by the vincla alkaloids if you take the normal mitosis the metaphase the spindle formation the chromosome doubling and tubulin molecule has been stacked and it is moved into anaphase this is a regular process Whereas, whereas what the vinca alkaloids specifically block is it will bind with the tubulin molecules fail to polymerize in the presence of vinca alkaloids so what will happen the tubulin molecule what here the spindle formation is not happening in the case of abnormal condition so consider this is the condition of the cancer cell when we treat with the vinca alkaloids the tubulin formation is not happening then the anaphase has been stopped where the dissolution of the mitotic spindle leads to the cell death so this these are the drugs that has been approved in the era of us cancer into 1972 and uh, anti cancer agents but the advantage is it is going to kill the cancer cell but also it has an disadvantage it is also going to affect the normal cells also so how this uh, generally the anti cancer drugs uh, that has been targeting the cell signaling is the common process called the program cell death so this is called as the apoptosis now in the next slide we will see more uh, detail about how the apoptosis and reactive oxygen species has been linked together so apoptosis is the regulated process that allows a cell to self degrade in order to eliminate the unwanted or dysfunctional cells from the body the biochemical characterization of apoptosis is associated with i molecular weight dna fragmentation into an oligonucleosomal ladder phosphatidyl serine esterization and proteolytic cleavage of a number of intracellular substrates and mitochondria is the major uh, organ that has been responsible for generation of ros that is reactive oxygen species inside the cell which serve as an inducing signal for the programmed cell death process there are generally classified the basically the programmed cell death into two types one is the necrosis that is also one of the cell death process whereas the apoptosis which we are talking about the programmed cell death in any of the anti cancer drugs are exhibiting through the mechanism so what is the difference between major or necrosis and apoptosis if you say necrosis it is called as a chromatin clumping swollen organelles and flocculent mitochondria has been seen inside the cell which will lead to the disintegration that will releases the intracellular contents that will lead to the inflammation of the cell if you take the programmed cell death process called apoptosis while the chromatin compensation and segregation condensation of cytoplasm is occurring that will lead to the nuclear fragmentation blebbing and apoptotic bodies which will lead to the process called the phagocytosis through this phagocytosis process the apoptotic bodies has been extruded out where the phagocytic cell is coming so this is the major difference between the necrosis and apoptosis process and what is the major pathway that has been involved in the cell death you can say two different pathways one is the extensic pathway that has been involved in the death receptor that has been bind with the fad and pro caspase in the presence of pro caspase it activate the caspase site and one caspase is activated it will activate the pro caspase 3 to caspase 3 that will lead to the apoptosis this is called a death receptor pathway and most of the drugs that is chemotherapeutic drugs which we are going to see in anti cancer study which will follow the intrinsic pathway that is mitochondrial mediated targeted cell death pathway whether it may be a chemotherapeutic drug or uv eliminated or any radiation induced damage to the cell that will lead to the inhibition or activation of anti apoptotic and apoptotic proteins such as bcl2 bim bcl xl bad and lead to the cytochrome c release from the mitochondria from inside the mitochondria to the outer side that the cytochrome c will activate the pro caspase 9 to the caspase 9 which will lead to the cell death process now we will see the major uh, pathway which we are going to do uh, we talked on the introduction about the foxo3 and uh, pa3k akt signaling 
So what is what is FOXO3? FOXO3 proteins belongs to a super family wing DNA binding domain and it is function not only the anti-cancer it has a variety of functions such as cell proliferation, cell cycle progression, cell differentiation, tissue homeostasis, angiogenesis and apoptosis. The deregulation of FOXO transcription factors can lead to the severe pathogenic condition which includes the cancer. There are different types of FOXO families, one is found FOXO1, FOXO3A, FOXO4 and FOXO6. Whereas if you see FOXO1 and FOXO3 expressed in nearly in all tissues that has been present in our body. Whereas FOXO4 is more specific, present in kidney, muscle and colorectal tissue. FOXO6 present in the brain and liver. Whereas in our uh, study we are more uh, focused on FOXO3 because it functions downstream of ERK, MAP kinase, PA3, AKT and ICAPA B pathways and therefore facilitate the crosstalk between the three frequently downregulated or deregulated signaling cascades in most cancer pathways. As I told earlier, there are several anti-cancer drugs that uh, have been av available commercially which include Paxitaxol, Doxorubicin, Lapatinib, Jefitinib, Imatinib, Cisplatin and Tamaxifone. Most of the drugs are mediated or following through this FOXO3 activation primarily via inactivation of the P80 AKT axis. That means that has been uh, downregulated the P83 pathway thereby the upregulation of the FOXO3 signaling has been activated in the cancer mediated cells thereby it prevents the anti-cancer activity. These are the basic uh, mechanism how the nuclear transport and cancer from mechanism to intervention. There are two pictures if you take a uh, Picture A, it is a normal cell, B is a carcinoma cell, it, is, it has been any carcinoma, not specific with the breast cancer. If you take normal cell, it has been anchored with insulin like growth factor receptor, epidermal growth factor receptor, ER2 receptor. What generally it will do, these three receptor molecules will activate the PA3K. These PA3K normal cells will activate the AKT that will inhibited by the phosphatase tensing. These phosphatase tensing is going to be an anti-cancer molecules that has been present in the normal cells. So what happened? This inhibition will recruit these FOXO3 molecules from the cytoplasm and P27 cell cycle regulated as proteins inside the nucleus where the FOXO binds with the DNA domain. Then the FOXO3 binds with the DNA that will activate the several cell cycle regulated proteins P27, CDK2 and cyclins where it will mediate or responsible for the systemic process of the cell cycle arrest. This is how the normal cell control process has been happening. Whereas if you take the carcinoma cell, the phosphatase tensins, this anti-tumor property has been inhibited in the cancer cells because there is a more uh, multiplication of cancer cells. The P10 activity has been inhibited. So what will happen? The AKT will turn activate this all the FOXO3 molecules present in the nucleus that will turn activate to the Deposporylation. The phosphorylation will turn out from the nucleus into the cytoplasm that will reach to the dysregulation of this transcription activation of the nucleus molecule that has been associated with the cell that will lead to the more proliferation of the cancer cells. That means that there is no proper cell cycle regulators here that will lead to the more cancer cell proliferation here as compared with the control cells. Now this table clearly shows in these clinical cancer research source 2015 what are the anti-cancer treatment targets FOXO3 through three oncogenic kinases which I showed in a previous slides AKT, ICAPA kinase and extracellular regulatory kinase that not only the breast cancer, some of the blood cancers apart from the breast cancer, the myelid leukemia this is called a blood cancer, osteo bone cancer, prostate, kidney, leukemia, melanoma all are these are the drugs which I have been shown, the Paxitaxel, Imatinib, Ipadinib, Jefitinib, Doxorubicin. The protein majorly if you see the published reports, if you see this is called the FOXO3. These are the major targets that has been already shown through the different commercially available drugs and these are the down regulating molecules which include AKT and ERK and what are the detailed signal pathway affected through ap apoptosis, activation and induction of FOXO3 like that it has been mentioned and also the tubulin targeting also here. Now uh, before going to the, our R&D activities, I just want to show you some of the four important 
studies that has been carried out with a natural product especially against the different cancer cells not only in the breast some of um, examples of the colon cancer also if you take from the genistein the first uh, published report the genistein inhibits the proliferation of colon cancer cells by attenuating the negative effect of epidermal growth factor on tumor suppressor or fox 3 this is specially on colon cancer what is genistein genistein is nothing but a natural product isolated from the soy isoflow so it is mean by a soy derived isoflow and it has been already shown the anti neoplastic activity generally what the genistein will do is it binds and inhibits the protein tyrosine kinase family thereby it, uh, disturbing the signal transduction and inducing the cell differentiation and also this genistein genistein inhibits the topoisomerase 2 leading to the dna fragmentation and cell death process and induces a g2m cell like arrest apart from this uh, programmed cell death pathway this genistein also ex- exhibits the several uh, biological property which include immunosuppressive activity anti angiogenic and antioxidant so these are the one of the study that has been carried out with the genistein on this fopso3 the second one is the 18 beta glycerinic acid induces apoptosis through modulation of akt fopso3 beam in human breast cancer cells so this is 18 beta glycerinic acid is nothing but it's a tri uh, terpenoid component from the plant Uh, found in the glyceria glabra roots it is the plant name and it is the key metabolite of these compound is said to be the glycerin and glycerinic acid and this third one is said to be an, an aqueous extract of phagonica critica induces dna damage cell cycle arrest and apoptosis in breast cancer via foxo3 and p53 this phagonica critica belongs to the family uh, it has been present in the dry habitat all over the region of pakistan especially these fruits that belongs to it is commonly known as damasha in that uh, region it contains flavonoids and uh, triterpenoids as i told which have antioxidant activity and can be beneficial for disease where the ros is involved ros is nothing but a reactive oxygen species and it has been a widely reported anti cancer anti microbial and uh, antioxidant property the last one is the purified vitaxin compound one induces cell death such as apoptosis through activation of foxo3 in liver cancer So, what is this uh, purified vitaxin compound? One is a novel lignited compound isolated from the Chinese verb called vitax negulda, which I showed in introduction. It has a strong uh, anti-accident abilities and broad anti-tumor activities in many cancer cell lines and xenograft models. And this VB1 suppresses the growth of uh, melanoma, especially skin cells, and induces uh, cell death in breast cancers by increasing the ROS levels. so uh, the reason why i am showing this slide is there are uh, reports already has been started from the year of 2013 itself in this foxo3 and still more research are going on with the different uh, natural products especially they are targeting through foxo3 signaling now i am coming to that actual uh, our study what we have carried out this is the seed which we carried out in our study it is called as iron wheat kala ziri kala zuru kadu ziri the different languages in india and it is uh, commonly known as a senpanthum anthelminticum that is a botanical name family belongs to ostacea this is the plant and this is the seed it looks like zira but it is actually is a animate component that is very bitter if you taste naturally so if you see this overview of various biological effects and the involvement of multiple signaling pathways targeted by senpanthum anthelminticum So there are several studies that has been carried out with the centrantan athelminticum as a extract, but no one has studied as a pure component, which we are going to uh, show in upcoming slides. So if you take the centrantan athelminticum itself, it has been showing antioxidant, anti-diabetic, anti-inflammation. Some of the studies with the melanogenesis target, antimicrobial, antiviral, larvicidal, and some of them are reported in wound healing and angiogenesis. what we have done is to elucidate the role of vernodelin vernodelin is nothing but an active principal triterpenoid that has been isolated from the centrantham anthelminticum seeds that has been the potential chemopreventive agents against the breast cancer with the following experiments were carried out first one is the in vitro study where we used the two different cell lines one is mcf7 and mda mb231 what is mcf7 and mdab231 is both the cells represent invasive ductal breast carcinoma cells yet there has been several phenotypic or genotypic differences between these 
two different cells such as MCF7 and MDA, MB231. MCF7 generally defined as a hormone dependent cell line where both estrogen and progesterone receptor are positive that is called ER and PR become positive in these cells whereas MDA, MB231 are said to be in triple negative where the lack of estrogen receptors that means the negative that is the lack of estrogen receptors has uh, lead to the rendered MDA MB231 insensitive to treatment with anti-estrogens such as uh, that will lead to the selective estrogen receptor modulator the tamoxifen which is widely used in the breast cancer chemo prevention but it is also used as an adjuvant to the primary diseases. So these are the two different cell lines in the in vitro model we have taken for these in vitro experiments. So what we have done is first as I told we have to isolate the bernoulliin for that we have carried out the bio as a guided fractionation followed by the different cytotoxicity and the real time cell growth analysis followed by reactive oxygen species and programmed cell death studies apoptosis studies has been carried out followed by the mitochondrial membrane potential and the involvement of OXO3 through different uh, experiments which include western blot immunofluorescence analysis and the down regulation of this OXO3 molecule especially phosphatidylinositol 3 kinase and adenosine kinase AKT has been carried out and also we carried out the SIRNA silencing with the OXO3 nucleotides. Coming to the in vivo model, we used the RATS model to create this mammary breast cancer by using specific LA7 human breast cancer cells by using orthotropic model and we used the vernodilin our drug as well as the standard drug tamoxifen with this animal model to show which one is showing the better efficiency. Along with we carried out the biochemical and tumor volume measurement, expression of proliferating cell nuclear antigen. These are the molecules that have been associated markers during this breast cancer KA61 and, and along with the FOXO3 expression and cell cycle markers P27 KIP1 in the breast tissues with the Bernoulliin treatment. Now coming to the three objectives of our study. To study the Bernoulliin, the active fraction, mediate the cell death and to check the FOXO3 levels as I told in the two different cell line model and also to elucidate whether this FOXO3 has any correlation or in the down regulation of PA3 AKT pathway during this venodolin treatment and the final one is the phrenodolin has any anti activity in the animal model during the LA7 induced tumor model. So now I will tell you the, what are the detailed uh, instruments which have been used in this study to especially isolate the active component venodolin which we used HPLC and the LCMS to analyze the mass spectrometry of this particular component. HPLC we are known this is a purified uh, high performance liquid chromatography used to fractionate with the different uh, solvent extracts and uh, further the active component had been mass spectrometrically analyzed by using LCMS. Followed by in the biological work we used a cellomics eye content screening. It is being used to detect the different uh, fluorescent apoptotic markers with the different dyes at a single time. It is an automated method used to identify cell in desired method by integrating macking image processing and isolation tools. And also I told real time cell analysis, a newly developed electronic cell sensor array for dynamic monitoring of cell attachment, proliferation, damage and death. Okay, now coming to this our uh, experimental parts, how, do, how we isolate an active compound from the centrantum and thalmaticum seeds. We have taken 100 gram initially with the different solvent extracts, hexane, chloroform, methane and the chloroform extract has been done with the MTT whereas hexane and methane also we have done, we have not seen any anti-cancer activity. So we more focused on the chloroform extract, we used a flash column with the C18, different fractions starting from A, B, C, D, E, F. We collected and if you see A and B we can see more IC50, IC50 is nothing but the inhibitory concentration, 50% of the active component have the ability to kill the breast cancer cells. So what we observe, IC50 on the both fraction A and B nearly 5.5 and 5.8 whereas the several fractions from C, D, F we found nearly above 100 microgram per ml IC50 concentration. So from this HPLC preparation the 1 and 2 which is showing the less IC50 has been pooled and it has been prepared and it has been shown the nearly 10 mg of the 100 gram from the total volume we can able to get only the 10 mg of the purified one. This is the peak of this HPLC 
Further, the mass spectra analysis clearly shown the active component bernoulliine, the picture A, whereas the picture B is the another pooled one from this uh, compound two, which is not required in our study, but we have also done where there is very few component of the bernoulliine has been the pooled one current, whereas the fraction A and B showing the better pure compound of the bernoulliine, which is the molecular formula which has been identified from mass spectra showing C19H2107, the weight is 360. If you take the chemical functional groups, it has been enriched morely on lactones and isoprene neurines. It is called as the sesquiterpenoids. Now coming to the results. Now we have isolated, purified and confirmed that bernoulliine is showing some IC50 against the breast cancer cells. So now we have to make more studies on in vitro cells. We will start from the IC50 with the MTT analysis and the real time cell analysis. So three different cell lines here we used. As I told in the previous slides, MCF7 and MDA, what is the major difference of this breast apart from that? We use the primary memory epithelial. The reason for using the primary memory epithelial is the control here. Where we can able to see the primary memory epithelial, the 18.7 of the IC50. That is, it is a good reasonable one because in cancer cells it was showing nearly 6.2 and 6.5 in the two different cell lines, this venodilin, whereas in the primary memory cells it was showing only the 18.7 for the IC50. Then the picture B and C is a clear one, the real time cell growth analysis where we started from the 0 hour to 1 or 2. That means we have carried out nearly the complete analysis without any break we can able to monitor. That is the real time cell analysis assay. We have monitored up to 1 or 2 hours where we can see up to 17 or 22 hours, nearly up nearly 22, 22 hours there is not, no much change with the different concentration. The control is the blue one and pink, blue and green and red with the different concentration. We choose these concentration based upon the IC50 of this drug. So what we observe, after reaching the 24 hours, it starting declining. So it clearly indicates up to 25, 25 microgram and 12.5 microgram is showing the more death. Uh, that is the complete decline of the normalized cell index, if you see from here itself. Whereas up to 24 and 48 hours, it has been stable in both the cases in 3.125 and 6.25 times. So major of the studies has been confirmed that dosage between 6 to 6.5 microgram per ml of the vernodalin will be the better concentration for doing this study on the both the specified breast cancer cells. As I told uh, in the introduction, the cell death is the important process. Here we used two specific uh, molecules that is called annexin 5. It is a calcium binding protein. What will happen during the cell death process? The calcium has been leaked from the outside of the cell. What will happen that presence of annexin, this is a calcium binding protein. Once the phosphatidyl serine molecule that has been present in the cell that has been leaked outside the cell that has been fluorescent green in color. So that is why in the control we could not see any green fluorescence because there is no leakage of the phosphatidyl serine from the outside of the cell whereas in the case of brenodilin treatment the cell death process leads to the leakage of green along with the O chest. This is a nucleus, nucleus binding dye which is emits fluorescent in color blue. So the blue and green which we merged we can see the more amount of dead cells during the brenodilin treatment. And this is the palad in which I showed uh, the microtubule formation where the microtubule formation is intact in the control cells because there is no venodilin in these breast cancer cells. Whereas the breast cancer cells treated with 6.25 microgram per ml we can able to see the microtubule filament defragmentation along with the OHS dye. Similarly, as I told this uh, venodilin fraction compared with the doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is a commercial drug that has been used for the breast cancer treatment where we can see most of the morphological features of the breast cancer cells matching with the doxorubicin that indicates this venodilin treatment will undergo the cell death process. Now important analysis is the fluorescent activated cell sorting analysis of the both different cell lines with a different concentration of uh, venodilin in MCF7 and MDMB, what we observed there are four quadrants. Lower is a control, early apoptotic, late apoptotic and necrotic. These are the four quadrants. 
where we can see the concentration of 6.25 microgram and 12.5 kilogram nearly the 50 percent that is concentration which reads the yearly apoptotic 56 percent has been going to the yearly apoptotic cells and uh, late apoptotic we can able to see the 44 percent as compared with the 32 percent in the md mb231 cells so these are the quantitative measurements from the facts uh, analysis where we can see the 6.25 microgram per ml the early apoptotic which reaches 50 percent in the case of uh, mcf whereas in the case of mdmb it reaches the 35 percent that has been evident from this figure another important process which i have been shown in, in introduction is the cell cycle arrest which involves mainly the g0 g1 and g2 m phase where it uh, mcf7 and mdmb which has been showing that g0 g1 arrest as compared with the control where the treatment with the venodilin with the 6.25 and 12.5 if you compare the control the values g0 g1 is the 64 whereas when you increase the treatment we can able to see the inhibition at the g0 g1 level is a 72 during the but there is no much difference between the venodilin concentration when we increase 6.25 to 12.5 this is more or less same similarly also we observed that venodilin at 61.0 as compared with the control 55.4 though there is confirms that cell cycle arrest has been happening at the g0 g1 stage specifically this experiment has been done uh, once the venodilin treatment has been done it has been fluorescently cell sorted by using the propidium iodide dye yeah that's the important component how the reactive oxygen species production has been involved during the venodilin treatment so as i told there is an, a nucleus type it is called o chest binds with the dna and specifically dye called h2 dcfda acetoxyl methyl esterase how it is works this h2 dcfda acetoxyl methyl esterase binds with the cell membrane once it binds the cellular esterase activity this non fluorescent component the presence of reactive oxygen species leads to the fluorescent dcf so it has been clearly mentioned during the venodilin treatment here you can see the increased fluorescence of the green due to the presence of reactive oxygen species as compared with the control both on mcf7 and md mb231 cells these are the merged pictures which will show the binding of o chest dye and the dna which showing the blue compared with the merged with the green showing the more fluorescence during the venodilin treatment which indicates the increased reactive oxygen species as I told, there is an important pathway in interaction called uh, intrinsic pathway where the importance of mitochondrial membrane potential leakage is playing important role on leakage of cytochrome C. This is the dye which we used uh, for combined dye which can be able to detect the mitochondrial membrane permeability, membrane potential and cytochrome C. These are the three different dyes where we can see the control membrane permeability is intact so there is no leakage so there is no green fluorescence and if you take membrane potential it has been high level so that's why we can able to see the more fluorescence in the control without any drug treatment and the cytochrome c there is no much differences that is why when the membrane permeability is losses during the venodilin treatment we can see the more green fluorescent in mcf7 as well as md 231 as compared with the control and mitochondrial membrane potential is completely lost that's why we can able to see the less fluorescence intensity of the red color both in the venodilin treatment in mcf and mda mb231 cells along with the cytochrome c leakage has been detected so this last panel will show the merged image all these three dyes which showing that uh, membrane permeability mem mitochondrial membrane potential along with the cytochrome c we can able to see the all the three increased fluorescent intensity of these specific dyes so this Results clearly shows that these venodilin have the ability to mediate the cell death process through loss of membrane potential and cytochrome C release. Another important pathway is the intrinsic pathway which I have showed different caspase activity molecules that has been detected in both MCF7 and MDA MB231 cells. It is the basically is a kit method that has been treated with the different time period hours up to 30 hours and the cell isolate has been detected with a specific kit that has been available for caspase 3 7 and 8 and 9 we can able to see the fold increase compared to the control this is the control one there is no much uh, increase whereas the caspase 8 and caspase 9 has been increased between the 18 to 24 hours and after that it start declining 
this is normal because once it reaches the saturation level after that the cell death process is happening it will become neutralized so similarly in the mdmb231 also there is an increase in the caspase 8 and caspase 9 as compared with the control level apart from that we carried out the western blot analysis this is the western blot analysis and nothing but a membrane uh, analysis where the protein has been transferred into the nitrocellulose membrane and it has been uh, processed with the specific primary antibodies of caspase 3 7 and 9 and par along with the secondary antibody and we done uh, the cell isolate with the different uh, time periods of uh, mcf7 and mba231 for 24 hours ranging from 3 6 and 12.5 microgram and we can able to see at the range of 6.25 microgram in both mca7 and mda the caspase level 3 7 and 9 has been evident as compared with the control now coming to the important aspect which we talked about the, during the introduction is the foxo3 signaling as we know the foxo3 has been down regulated in the cancer cells that has been uh, present in the several investigators where we can see from this western blood analysis in the control breast cancer cells of mcf7 without treatment with enodeline showing the lower level of foxo3 that is evident whereas what will happen when we treat this vernodiline, it clearly shows the increased upregulation of these FOXO3 proteins and similarly the FOXO, POSPO FOXO3 level has been downregulated. That is how it is happening in the nuclear transport which I shown the picture in the introduction. And we know the beam with anti-apoptotic protein has also been upregulated during the FOXO3. It has been evident both on MCF7 and MDAMB. These FOXO3 and beam has been upregulated. This is the quantitative image of this Western blood analysis. Similarly, the cell cycle with specific analysis check proteins such as P27, KIP1, P21, CYP1, Cyclin D1, Cyclin E. Both the cases of MDA, MB and MCF7 with the different concentration of venodilin has been analyzed. Has been evident this P21 and P27 has been increased in the breast cancer treated cells with venodilin. Whereas the Cyclin D1 and Cyclin E has been down regulated for the nuclear transport. So these are the similar uh, uh, experimental evidence that has been observed in both the MDMB231 cells also during the venodolin treatment. This is the relative intensity of the western blood quantification which indicates the upregulation of the cell cycle proteins during the venodolin treatment. Now coming to the fluorescent microscopic analysis especially how this FOXO3 nuclear translocation have been happening in the MCF7 cells. This is a specific FOXO3 antibody that has been labeled along with the fluorescent dye I just told the chest has been used as a nuclear dye for DNA binding where we can see the venodilin treatment showing the increase the fluorescence in the breast cancer cells as compared with the control we can see the less intensity of the fluorescence. When we increase in the concentration, we can see the increasing fluorescence and we also analyzed by using the standard drug called doxorubicin also showing the similar type of fluorescence which indicates the increased nuclear translocation of the specific uh, treatment during the venodilin has been confirmed. This is on MCF7 and similar findings we can able to see on the MDMB231 cells where we can see the more increased fluorescent intensity during the venodilin treatment as compared with the control cells here and this study also compared with the doxorubicin. Further, in specific we carried out the cytoplasmic and nuclear protein expression by using western blood analysis after venodilin treatment both the nucleus and cytosol fraction has been collected and we increased the concentration we can able to see the increased nucleus fraction whereas in the cytosol we used gamma dh as a marker for a contamination check analysis and lamin B1 we used as a nuclear contamination check where we could not able to see any cross contamination between the nucleus and cytoplasmic fraction which will conclude the more evidence our FOXO3 protein plays important role in the nuclear transport that has been evident from this study. As I told uh, in introduction the, during the plan of our study we used the effect of FOXO3 silencing in the study during the venodilin treatment we used a control SIRNA Minus means that there is no presence and plus means it has been a presence of FOXO3 silencing nucleotides control and FOXO3 SARNA has been used in this experiment both MCF and MDAV 
Plus means in the presence of venodiline treatment, we can able to see when we sinus the FOXO3, there is no uh, play role in the venodiline treatment that indicates the FOXO3 is play important role during the venodiline treatment, thereby it prevents the anti-cancer activity. And similarly, there is no expression of FOXO3 during venodiline treatment when the presence of uh, XIRNA inhibitor has been evident and has been compared with the control also. We can see the increased FOXO3 expression. And these are the quantitative analysis and percentage of apoptosis that has been shown. Whereas the FOXO3 SARNA silencing, we can see the more amount of apoptosis. When we knock down the control SARNA, we could not be able to see the specific FOXO3 expression that has been evident from here. As I told, uh, important down regulating molecules of the FOXO3 is the PA3 AKT mechanism that has been not only proven here, it has been shown in several cancer pathways where we can see the phosphorylated AKT and phosphorylated PA3K level has been completely down regulated during venodiline treatment that has been evident because it has been down regulating molecule during the FOXO3 activation and total AKT does not change much and these are the relative intensity of the different uh, Concentration of the venodiline has been shown. And the important assay is it's a radio labeling assay to confirm the AKT kinase assay during venodiline treatment. It is an indirect molecule that is called glycogen synthase kinase beta. That is the substrate that has been used for the AKT kinase treatment where we observe that increased concentration of the venodiline showing the decreased phospho GSK kinase activity which shows the involvement of the AKT kinase activity. So, it has been indirect measure as I told the AKT kinase pathway confirmation and these relative intensity also measured in the quantitative analysis where we can able to see the GSK3 beta level has been decreased during the venodiline treatment. So far, all our studies we have uh, correlated in the in vitro studies with the different signaling molecules starting from the cell death pathways apoptotic markers, mitochondrial markers, FOXO3, PA3K, AKT, western blot and silencing the different FOXO3 molecule along with the AKT kinase activity. These are all uh, showing whether the complete involvement of the FOXO3 and down radiating molecules of the PA3 AKT. Now this slide we will move to the results of in vivo section by using orthotropic model by using the rats LA7 cells. Especially, these LA7 cells have the ability to create within the 4 weeks of the mammary fat pad breast tissue region by inoculating the directly on the mammary fat pad the cells. Now, this table will show the treatment effect of venodiline and tamoxifen. Here we used animal model tamoxifen as a standard drug whereas in cell line model we used as a doxorubicin as a standard drug. In animal body weight, tumor volume measurement and tumor reduction percentage in LA7 induced breast cancer model. There are 5 different groups we used, group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4 and group 5. Whereas if you see the group 3, tumor induced model treated with 1 mg per kg of venodiline. Whereas group 4 showing the highest concentration, 10 mg per kg venodiline. Whereas the group 5, the standard drug, 1 mg per kg weight of tamoxifen. We found that body weight has been decreased as compared with the tumor control during the venodiline treatment. It has been prominently evident. Whereas the tumor volume percentage we, we can see from the tumor treated group with the venodiline 11822 to 524 and 562. If you take the percentage size from the tumor treated 44 percent, 0.84 percentage of percentage reduction when we treat for 1 milligram per kg venodiline. Whereas 10 milligram per kg venodiline showing the more reduction that is 75 percent which has been nearly comparable with the standard drug tamoxifen it is showing the 73.78 percentage. As I told, there are two important markers such as KA67 and proliferating cell nuclear antigen in breast tumor tissue. What we will do is after creating the breast induction in 28 days, after the treatment with the venodiline, we sacrifice the animals and we section these breast tissues and we used immunohistochemical analysis with a specific primary antibody of KA67 and PCNA and we can able to see the tumor control group that is tumor created without venodiline treatment. The breast cancer induced animal showing the more brown cells which indicates the reactivity of this PCNA molecule both KA67 and PCNA. When we treated with the venodiline with a different concentration along with the tamoxifen we can able to see the 
brown intensity got decreased it indicates the tumor markers has been reduced during the venereal treatment which indicates that has the protective effect or anti cancer effective property of these venereal during the animal model that has been evident from the specific markers of breast cancer ka67 and pcna that means the venereal treatment have the ability to down regulate the expression as compared with the control cells control tissues especially breast cancer tissues similarly when we correlate the in vitro model we used two specific molecule such as p27 kipon cell cycle and phosphofoxo3 in the breast tumor tissue in the tumor control we can see the p27 kipon has been down regulated as we seen from the in vitro when we treated with venodilin the p27 kipon has been up regulated that has been evident here while in contrast we seen here the phosphofoxo3 level has been highly up regulated in the tumor treated group whereas the venodilin treatment group we can able to see the decreased level of expression of the phosphofoxo3 which correlate with our in vitro studies model and similarly these findings also been correlated with the tamoxifen commercially available drugs so to overall summarize the in vitro and the in vivo studies of our uh, findings this slide will show the schematic representation of venodilin mechanism on foxo3 pa3 akt pathways in breast cancer cells what will happen when we give the venodilin on the breast cancer cells it will inhibit the phosphorylation of pa3k which will turn activate the inhibition of phosphorylation of akt this akt will inhibit the phosphorylation of the foxo3 where the foxo3 will binds inside the nucleus it binds with the dna where other molecules that has been present inside the cyclin e and cyclin d1 will inhibit this activity whereas the anti apoptotic and apoptotic proteins will turn activate presence of the upregulation of the foxo3 during the breast cancer cells during venodilin treatment that will lead to the upregulation of beam and bax into the outside of the nucleus that will lead to the programmed cell death on the other end the upregulated of proteins such as p21 and p27 kip1 will will inhibit the cell cycle inhibition thereby it down regulate the breast cancer cell activation now conclude the overall study of our findings this venodilin inhibits the cell growth of mcf7 and mdmb231 cells through induction of cell cycle arrest and apoptosis this venodilin mediate the cell death process through reactive nasal inspection and caspases that has been observed through western blot and fluorescent analysis this process subsequently lead to the attenuation of mitochondrial membrane potential and cytochrome c release this cytochrome c release activates the caspase cascade and pork cleavage to execute the apoptotic program through western blot analysis we confirm whereas the pa3 akt foxo signaling pathway might enhance the cytotoxicity of venodilin against the breast cancer cells this venodilin interferes with the cellular process by targeting different intracellular molecules and apoptosis through foxo transcription factors and its downstream targets which have been shown in our previous results such as p27 p21 cyclin d1 and e further to validate our in vitro study the in vivo experiments reveals antiplorating effect of venodilin confirmed by using specific markers ka67 pcna in la7 induced model based on this we will suggest the venodilin used as a target for the therapeutic or preventive intervention in breast cancer as well as other cancer typologies recently we have done also on the colon cancer with a different erk mechanism which has been also published which has been shown a very good activity on the colon cancer cells also now i will conclude uh, this section and uh, thank you for all your patience for uh, listening this uh, research activities that has been be carried out on this uh, breast cancer cells if you have any questions and clarification please feel mail to me as i mentioned here my contacts and email id thank you very much for your listening